In this lesson we'll talk about scientific notation. When we deal with very large numbers or very small numbers, like in sciences, to make it more convenient to record those numbers, we use scientific notation. What is it? A number x is written in scientific notation if and only if this number can be expressed in the form a times certain power of 10. What do we require from a? The absolute value of the number a is required to fall in the interval from 1 to 10, including 1 but excluding 10. So what does this really tell us about a? Basically, it tells us that a must be a number of the sort one non-zero digit, for example 2, then place a dot, and then anything that comes after it, let's say 105. So that will be a good candidate for number a. Notice that we are taking absolute value of a, that means a by itself could be either positive or negative. That's okay to have a negative number here. However, what's important is that we are taking one non-zero digit and place a dot. And then we fix this situation by multiplying by a power of 10. So in scientific notation, number a is called coefficient, and then we multiply this coefficient by the power of 10, 10 is the base, with certain exponent n. The exponent comes from integers. Again, the exponent could be positive, could be negative, could even be 0. The exponent 0 would mean that we are not moving the decimal dot from the coefficient at all. The positive exponent tells us that in order to recover the number, we actually need to move this decimal dot to the right. And as you may expect, if n is negative, then the decimal in the coefficient needs to be moved to the left. Just because the power of 10 with negative exponent becomes a number that is smaller than 1. So makes the number smaller, therefore we move the dot to the left. Let's see how it works. Write each number in scientific notation. So to rewrite this large number in scientific notation, I need to follow the rule. Write the coefficient, which requires that I take first non-zero digit, which is 9, place a dot, and write the rest of the meaningful digits, so just 6 and 7. Obviously, we don't need to write zeros after 7. They won't introduce any essential information about the number anymore. Now, since our original number is not 9 with something, we need to fix this situation by multiplying by a power of 10. What power of 10? What would be this exponent? Well, let's count. We need to move this decimal dot, which we place exactly after 9. How many places? Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that will be 10 to the 8. So our number 967 millions can be written in scientific notation as 9.67 times 10 to the 8. OK, let's go to the next number. This time the number is smaller than 1. Again, the rule is to find out this coefficient in scientific notation, we take first non-zero digit and place a dot. Copy the rest. Then fix the situation by multiplying by a power of 10. What power? Well, this exponent will tell us which way should we move our decimal dot. The decimal dot that we placed was here, so we need to shift it one, two, three, four places. Therefore, the exponent is negative four. Okay, now let's try those examples. Is this number in scientific notation? Well, it looks like similar because we have a power of 10 here, but it's actually not scientific notation because this coefficient doesn't satisfy the definition of scientific notation. We're supposed to have just one non-zero digit and a dot, but we have 12. So 12 is larger than 10. It doesn't fall into this interval. Therefore, we need to rewrite this number in scientific notation first. So to do it, I will write 1.2045. That would already satisfy the condition for scientific notation. And then to fix this number, I need to move my decimal dot, which I placed here, one step to the right. OK, so it's times 10 to the 1. However, I still had this times 10 to the negative 3, so let's copy it, times 10 to the negative 3. 
And finally, what we do is just combine the powers of 10 by adding exponents. So our number in scientific notation will be 1.2045 times 10 to the negative 2. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Okay, let's try one more example. Again, our coefficient is not really satisfying the condition of scientific notation. We need to have the first non-zero digit, which is 6, then place a dot, and actually we don't need to write anything here, because there's no significant number after it, so this dot is not even needed here. And then we need to fix the situation by multiplying by a certain power of 10. So this number we wish to mean exactly the same as 0 0.06. Since I place my dot after 6, in order to recover the number, I have to move it backwards two steps. Move it backwards means the exponent by the 10 should be negative, and it's negative 2. Now let's copy the rest of it, which is 10 to the 6, and we can combine the two powers. So the overall answer will be 6 times 10 to the 6 minus 2 is 4. This is already in scientific notation. 6 is from this interval from 0 to 10, and it's multiplied by a certain power of 10. So let's summarize. The sign of the exponent tells us which way to move the decimal point of the coefficient a to find the actual value of the number x. So this exponent tells us which way should we move this decimal to recover the original number x. As we see in example b, the negative 4 tells us that this dot after 4 needs to be moved to the left 4 steps to recover the original number. While in example a, the exponent 8 tells us that the dot needs to be moved to the right to recover the original number. In the next exercise, we want to write the other way around. We have a number in scientific notation, we want to know what does this really mean. So what's the actual number? So let's follow the directions that comes from the exponent. We need to move the decimal in our coefficient 5 steps to the left. So let's rewrite 305. Our decimal was here, and now we can count 5 steps to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and a decimal dot. All those empty spots need to be filled by zeros. And that's how we recover our number. Ok, next example. This time we'll write just 5107. The decimal was placed here, but the exponent tells us to move this decimal 4 steps forward. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, the empty spot needs to be filled by zero. So our final number is 51,070. How do we multiply numbers in scientific notation? Obviously we could use calculator and do it, but I wish that you learn how to do it without calculator, maybe just helping yourself with calculator when you need to multiply or divide some unpleasant numbers, but the process of it, you should be able to do it on your own. So in order to multiply these two numbers, that are expressed in scientific notation, what we do is we multiply the coefficients first. Since those numbers are not too bad, we can even multiply in our heads. 2 times 8 and a half, 2 times 8 is 16, and 2 times half is 1, so it's altogether 17. But if these numbers won't be so pleasant, you can use calculator and multiply this times this and write it down here. The rest of it what we need to do is multiply these two powers of 10. But remember, when we multiply powers with the same basis, we add exponents. So 17 needs to be multiplied by 10 to the 11 plus 7 is 18. That's great, but did we obtain a number in scientific notation? No, not at all, because 17 is not in an interval from 1 to 10. Ok, therefore we need to rewrite the number 17 in scientific notation. That becomes 1.7 times 10 to the 1. Right, 1 place value forward. Copy the other power of 10 and then combine them. Combine those two powers of 10. So it's 1.7 times 10 to the 19 overall answer. Similarly with division. 
Well, we can either use calculator to divide 1.5 by 6, or for these particular numbers we could probably do it in our heads as well, because 1.5 over 6 is like 15 over 60. But what does it mean? Well, if we divide the numerator and denominator by 15, we'll get 1 over 4, and 1 quarter is the same as 0.25. So this division result in 0.25. Obviously, if the numbers are not very pleasant, we can use calculator for just this part of the calculation. And then times the power of 10. But what do we have here? We divide powers with the same basis, so we're supposed to subtract exponents. So it's the same as 10 to the 24 minus 8 is 16. Again, check it, this is not a scientific notation number yet we need to convert the point 25 into scientific notation. So that will be first non-zero digit and a dot, so 2.5, times fix this number to mean point 25. So we really need to move the decimal dot backwards to the left, so negative 1 exponent. Copy the other power of 10, 10 to the 16, and overall we have 2.5 times 10 to the add exponent, so it's 15. Final answer. And one application problem. The average ocean depth is 3.7 times 10 to the 3 meters, and the area of the oceans is 3.6 times 10 to the 14 meters square. What is the total volume of the oceans in liters? So here we have a couple things to attend. First of all, we are asked about volume. Well, we know how to calculate volume of certain shapes, but this is not a regular shape. We have no idea how the ocean may look like. It may look, for example, somehow like this. Lots of different curves. So it's not a circle or a square or a rectangle, it's some unusual shape. However, we don't need to know the exact shape of the ocean here to find out its volume. It's enough that we know the area of this shape, because that will be the area of the base, and then we rise it by the depth. So that will be depth, which is 3.7 times 10 to the 3 meters. If we rise it like this, what will happen is we create some sort of cylinder. I'm sure I won't be able to draw exactly the same shape, but it's certain approximation. So imagine this shape, this area, this risen up by the depth d, and create some sort of cylinder but with unusual base, definitely not a circular base. But how do we calculate volume? Volume is the same as area of the base times height. In our case, area of the base is actually given. It's here. So area of the base is 3.6 times 10 to the 14 meters square. And the height, that's our depth. That's the same as depth. And it's also given. So we multiply by 3.7 times 10 to the 3 meters. Okay, therefore our volume will be in meters cube. The first thing that we need to do is to deal with those scientific notation numbers. And then the overall answer will be in meters cube. So yes, we'll get a volume. Okay, let's multiply 3.6 times 3.7 first. That's 13.32 using calculator. And then we can combine these powers of 10. It is 10 to the 14 plus 3 is 17. Everything is in meters cube. I can write it closer here. Okay. Let's rewrite this number in scientific notation. So we want this coefficient to be 1.332 rather than 13 point something. Times, since I chose my dot here, I need to move it one step forward, so it's times 10 to the 1 and times 10 to the 17. Okay, therefore the final answer in scientific notation in meters cube is 1.332 times 10 to the 18 meters cube. But is that what the question asks for? Hmm, what is the total volume of the oceans in liters? And we have our answer in meter cube. However, we have a conversion factor 
1 meter cube is the same as a thousand liters. Okay, therefore I can replace this 1 meter cube by a thousand liters. So overall my number will be 1332 times 10 to the 18 and then instead of meter cube I have thousand which is 10 cube liters. Great! So finally when I combine these two powers the total volume of oceans is 1.332 times 10 to the 21 liters. It's hard to imagine how large is this number. We can state the final answer. The total volume of the oceans is 1.332 times 10 to 21 liters. Lots of water.